Hi everybody, welcome back to Angie's Answers. Today I am going to show you how to make a tote bag mostly on your long arm machine. I saw this technique from one of the handy quilters. She's now a territory sales manager. I believe she was an educator at one point. Her name is Kelly Ashton. And she did a video on one of the handy quilter watch and learns. So if you go to their YouTube, you can also search for a tote bag on a long arm and you can see a lot of the techniques with this too. So that's where I learned this technique from, but I wanted to show you just a couple of the ways that I changed it up and did a couple different things too. So. Um, first, what I've got laid out is most of the pieces that I need for this tote bag. I will put a list in the description of all of the different fabrics and what those sizes were, but I wanted to show you those first before we jump into the machine. So the first fabric that I've got is this blue flowered fabric down here with the zipper on it. This is going to be the backing fabric that's going to hold the bag onto the long arm but this backing fabric is never going to be seen once you finish your bag. Um, this, as you can see, this is a pretty good sized tote bag. It's got some great straps that go all the way down and around the bag, so it's really strong and stable too. So this project does make a pretty good sized bag. You can, of course, adjust these measurements to any size that you wanted to. I was trying to figure out a good way to use um, fabric up without having a lot of extra pieces or some extra scraps. So this first fabric can literally be anything. Any scrap that you've got in your closet, you can use this. So what I've cut this is the width of fabric. It's 44 inches wide. And then I just cut one piece that was about 20 inches. I do like to always cut a little bit bigger than what I want for my finish size. So I did cut this one 21 and then square it up so it finishes 44 by 20. So that's for the backing of the bag. It's gonna finish 44 inches wide by 20 inches deep. Then once I squared it, I found my centers and then I attached it to that zipper because then this allows me to load that on the frame. So this is just the backing fabric that's going to hold our bag on our long arm while we're doing all of the quilting. But again, this fabric is not going to be seen. So it doesn't have to match. It doesn't have to coordinate. It could be any fabric you want. Just make sure that it's nice and square. Then what I've got for this piece, this is the first bag that I made that I tried. And I like this flower fabric. I also like the blue. But once I finished it, I was like, oh, I wish I could have had that reversed and maybe had the skinnier fabric be the blue and then the wider fabric be that white. So the way I cut this bag is I did that opposite. So this pink fabric that I've got here, this is going to end up to be this top section of my bag. So this was cut 36 inches wide, so I left it 44, trimmed it down to 36, and then I cut it about 17 inches, squared everything up, so this finishes 36 wide, by 16 long. So 16 top to bottom and then 36 wide is what ends up to be this whole top piece. It is all the way under inside of there too. So this does make most of the, the outside of the bag, the majority of the outside of the bag. So that's gonna be our top fabric section up here. Then this is going to be my body of my bag and the pockets here, this blue part. So this body of the bag, it's a cute little fabric here, um, got some cute little sayings and stuff on it. So this was also 44 inches wide. I did trim off the salvage once I squared it up. I cut this to be 17, but then I squared it down to be 16. So this piece ends up to be 16 inches wide by 44. So I've got 16 this way by 44 this way. So this is going to make the pocket section of the bag. And then I've got this piece here. This is going to be my bottom of the bag. This pink part, this will be this bottom part of the bag. And I'm also gonna create my straps out of this. Um, Kelly had shown in her video, she went to like Joanne Fabrics and bought some of the strapping material that's already pre-made and done, which is great. But I thought, you know what, if I needed a piece for this bottom, there would be enough left over from this cut to also make the straps. So that's what I'm doing with this fabric. This fabric will be my bottom and the straps on the bag. I wanted to show you how I cut this piece though before we take it over to the long arm because that can be a little bit confusing just in, a, in the description. 
So this piece, I cut it that 44 inches wide and then also 17 inches, but then squared it all up and trimmed it down. So I have a piece that is 44 by 16 for this that's going to be the bag bottom and the straps. The last thing that I pre-cut is some foam. So this is a foam stabilizer. This one we have from, I think it's Bosel or Bosel. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to say that. Um, it's called in and then the letter R foam is this one. So it's, it's a pretty good density to it, but it is still soft and kind of flexible, but that's what makes my bag stand up and not kind of tip over or fall over because it's got that foam through the entire project. It stays stable too. Um, I know Kelly put in her videos, I think it's called soft and stable. So you can get any type of foam um, interfacing that you would like. This is what we had here, so I used it. She did say that this foam does need to be larger than the measurement of what's going to be the top. So remember this pink fabric was my top fabric. So this foam, I did cut it to be 40 inches wide. So it's wider than what my top is going to be and about 20 inches long. So this is going to be bigger than my top fabric. I think when I cut this, um, this is the last part of the bolt that I had. So this I ended up only getting about 18 inches, which will still work because our pink is 16 inches. So I'll still have an inch on the top and bottom. But Kelly did say if you could make this foam just a little bit bigger, that would make your life easier in the long run when you're putting everything together. So we've got all of our pieces. I just wanna cut this last piece before we go over to the machine. Make sure that you understand how I'm cutting that down. Let me grab my rotary cutter, sorry, one second. Okay, so this piece of fabric, I do still have my salvage on it. I will hold up my salvage and make sure that that is nice and straight, nice and square, nice and flat. I did already square this. So I cut that 17, but then I folded it and I trimmed this to be straight for 16 inches. So now what I need to do is I need to cut a nine and a half by 16 and a half piece. So I'm gonna open this all the way up. I'm going to make sure that I can leave some room over here so I can trim off that salvage piece there. Make sure I am straight on my table. So this nine and a half by 16 piece, that's going to be what creates the bottom of our bag. So I'm gonna trim this down, cut my nine and a half inches off of there, and then I'm also going to cut my salvage off too. So I have one piece, nine and a half by 16. Then I do wanna trim this salvage off too. Well, I've got it laid out flat. The rest of this piece that is left, this ends up to be about 33 and a half is what this length is by 16 this way, once you cut that piece off. So I am going to fold this back in half for me, make sure that I'm nice and straight, nice and flat. Then I'm going to use this to cut my strap pieces. So the straps here that were on this bag, it was 108 inches total. One piece that was 108 inches long, three yards long. This did end up just a hair short for what I like for my strap. So I do want these to be a little bit longer. I did, this will make you more than 108 inches wide. Um, so I did trim some off to make that, that three yards. But I think for this, I may leave myself another like three or four inches longer, but we'll get to that part a little bit later. So what I wanna do to pre-cut these strap pieces is, remember this is our 16 inches wide. So I'm just gonna cut this into four inch sections and that's gonna give me four of them. So I'm gonna cut four inches and then I'm gonna cut at eight inches and at 12 inches. So that gives me four inches wide by that 30, what did we say, 33 and a half? Almost 34 inches long. So I'll have four pieces of this. I am then going to take and I'm going to seam all of these together, right sides together. So I have one long strip, pretend like you're making a binding, and then this will get folded in half once and then folded to the middle 
and fold it again. So that's what we're gonna make the strap out of, but I will show you that closer up later. So we've got all of our pieces. I believe we are ready to go over to the long arm and start putting this together on the long arm. Here we are at our long arm. I'm ready to start loading this on the frame. So this, remember, is my backing fabric that you are not going to see once the bag gets put together. I did square this. I found the centers. I lined it up with the center of my zipper, that quick zip system that we carry on our website, which is now also quiltingconnection.com. So you can put in longarmconnection.com or quiltingconnection.com. It'll take you to the same place. So the quick zip system is something that we created here. It helps us load our fabrics on so much faster because I can do all that pinning away from the frame and I don't have to try to lean over to do any of that pinning. So I search for the zipper that tells me to attach it to my backing fabric, the bottom left side. It also tells me to attach my backing fabric wrong side facing up. So I search for that one. That's the one that I'm gonna hold and I am going to put the rest of this up and over. I'm gonna make sure this isn't twisted coming from that backing fabric and I'm just gonna pull it up through the middle of these two roller bars. I have my machine set up in the standard loading mode. So that means that the belly bar is my backing. So my backing is going to go on here. So I make sure that my zipper isn't twisted coming from there. We've also made it super easy that right on the roller bar, this zipper that's attached to here tells me that it's my backing fabric roller bar too. So we try to make life really easy. So I just connect those two zippers together and zip that all the way across. Then I can take my top edge of my backing fabric here. Keep in mind, if you were doing a big quilt, you would put all of that backing fabric up and over there, roll your backing fabric onto here, and then attach this, but this is only 20 inches wide, so we can reach the entire thing because I am on my Forte machine. So I'm going to loosen up this roller bar and unroll that, so that way I can pull this canvas towards me. I again make sure that my zipper isn't twisted coming from this corner that that's nice and flat then I can attach these two zippers together so I'll push that into there slide all the way across oh and one pin pop out let me fix that pin quick and zip that on I am going to tighten this roller bar and lift that up and I'm going to let this one come a little bit farther forward so I can see that whole backing fabric in my front space. So I've got my backing fabric nice and tight loaded on here. Now I can grab that foam piece and just set that foam piece right on top of that backing fabric. I'm just kind of centering it there. Let me bring you guys just a little closer so you can see that better. There you go. So I just centered the foam piece on that backing. Um, then I'm going to find the center of my uh, pink piece of fabric, my top. You can do that, of course, by folding it, putting like a finger press in there to make sure that that is pressed out and that is our center. It is really important for us to know where the center of that bag is. Because in another step later, we're gonna match those together. Okay, so I've got that centered on there. I've got some space away from this edge of my foam this way, and some space away from the other edges of my foam. Okay, now I am ready to use my machine. I'm gonna bring that on over. I did find it was easiest for me when I'm doing this part to use the square feet. So these are the square feet from Handy Quilter. They come in two sizes. So we've got a quarter inch and we've got a half an inch. So I am going to use the quarter inch one, the smaller one. We will use, sorry, the half inch one later. So I'm going to use both of them, but first I'm going to use the quarter inch one. So I'm gonna take my foot off here and swap that out. Remember this is metal on plastic, 
So you don't wanna to push too hard. You don't wanna stretch that plastic or crack that plastic. You do wanna make sure that it's tight. So I just give a little wiggle to make sure that that's tight. I am going to turn off my lights so you can see a little bit better, perfect. Then I want to get this piece nice and straight on my backing fabric. I am gonna go just one click tighter, make sure that's nice and secure. So I'm gonna use my Pro Stitcher. I'm going to use the channel locks on my Pro Stitcher and I am going to start in this top left corner of the quilt. Bring up my bobbin thread. I did choose a thread that blends pretty good with all of the fabrics. That way I could use the same color thread the entire time. So I'm gonna bring up my bobbin thread. I'm going to hit my star button because that's my tack button. That's how I have it set up. And then I'm going to turn my horizontal channel lock on. With that channel lock on, I'm going to adjust the fabric as I'm sewing all the way across the top and that's what's going to square up this piece for me. So I'm keeping the edge of that square foot lined up on the edge of the fabric and I'm adjusting that fabric so it stays along that edge of that square foot. little bit I was a little bit too far um, or too close to that edge so I just went back a little bit pushed it up a little more and then came back down I'm going to switch my channel lock and put my vertical channel lock on and I'm going to work my way down this side so if I need a little bit more fabric I can help pull that out and I'm just making sure that this edge of the fabric is staying lined up far as I can go that way. Take my channel lock off and then I'm going to come back over to this top left corner. I don't like to sew backwards. Sometimes you can get your machine to do that but a lot of times you'll see that your thread could shred or break so I prefer to come back to the top left corner, stitch down and then we'll stitch across. So we're just completely securing this pink fabric to the foam. Turn our channel lock on. And I'm just keeping that fabric lined up right next to that square foot. Turn my channel lock on here, switch it to the horizontal, and then stitch all the way across this side. Bobbin thread. Okay. Now, what we want to do for that top part of the bag is we want the top about five inches on each side. We want that to be sewn. You can quilt this however you want to, quilt as desired. You can do free motion quilting. I have my pro stitcher, so I'm going to let my pro stitcher do the work. So I'm going to take my measuring tape and I'm going to figure out where my five inches is. You could also, silly me, you could also use the measuring tape that's on your press stitcher. So let's use that instead. I can do that by creating my area or using that measure function. So I'm going to push my machine to the top left corner and I am along the edges, all the way out to basically where I just stitched. And I'm going to go to my area tab and I'm going to touch my multi-point, which puts that point in that top left corner. I'm also going to turn the follow function on so I can see my crosshairs and I'm going to turn my measure function on. Let me bring you guys in a little closer so maybe you can see that better. So I'm under area. I did my first multi-point so I have one point count here. I turned my follow button on because that centers my crosshairs and I turned my measure function on. Now I'm going to slide over to the left here and I'm going to go about five inches, as close to five inches as I can. So I am at five, right there. Can you see that on there? And that's where I'm going to hit my next multi-point. So it tells me I have a point count of two. Then I'm just going to run all the way straight down until I get to this edge of the fabric. And I'm going to multi-point on this edge. 
then I can come all the way back to my corner. And I do want to check on the screen before I put that last multi-point in. So let's look at our screen first before we do that. I can't see the other points I created, so I can touch my home button and that's going to zoom out so I can see that area. So I'm going to keep moving back over. It also shows me my measure right back here. If I can get that measure back to zero, zero, then that's where I'm lined up with that one. So I'm going to put my fourth multi-point there with that diamond button. I can go ahead and turn that measure function back off. So here is our area created on our screen. Now I want to bring in a design. I think I'm going to flip you guys around so you can see the camera a little bit better. I need to open up a design. So I'm going to go to File, Design, and Open. We can choose anything. I do want to use a continuous line design. So if we live, look in the Pro Stitcher file, in the continuous line designs, you could scroll through here and choose anything. The advice that I would give you is make sure that the design itself doesn't interlock. So see how like this set of flowers, you would have a hole right there and a hole down here. So I probably wouldn't choose that one. I wanna choose something that's more, that will fill the entire rectangle without leaving me any holes. I am going to scroll down a little bit and go to the Sue Schmieden folder. That's my mom, for those of you that didn't know that. And I'm going to go to the repeats tab and I want to use her butterfly design. So I'm going to open that up. The next thing that I want to do is I want to scale this pattern a little bit better for my, my block here, for my five inch block that we've got here. If I go back to my area tab, our block is five, by 15 and a half. So I wanna scale this down. And this being a bag, you can do your quilting a lot closer together than you would want to on a big quilt. So first thing I wanna do is modify this design and resize it. I'm going to change the height of the design and I'm going to lock it. So keep in mind, I am going to rotate this. So the height of this design is actually going to fit here within my five inches because I can't have the design laid out the way that it is. I wouldn't, I would have a start and a stop on each edge of the area if I left it the way that it was. So let's resize our design. We've got our height and we've got it locked so it'll proportionately change. So our area was just about five inches. I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger by making it five and a half. So if we hit our one to one ratio, that's the scale of our butterflies. You could also turn on your grid to see the size of these butterflies. So they are about two and a quarter inches tall. So these dark lines here, this is a one inch, this is two inch, and then that's a quarter inch there. So the butterflies are about two and a quarter inches tall right now. So I've resized that design. Um, I know there's a little bit of a glare, but right up there it tells me that the total height is five and a half and the total width is 9.6. Now I need to take this design and I'm gonna rotate it. So I'm gonna to go to the rotate function up here and hit this 45 degree twice. So that'll rotate that for me that direction. We're gonna go into our repeat tab and I'm going to repeat vertically and I'm going to add a vertical repeat. When I touch my point to point button, that should fix this mess that I've got in here. So when I touch the point to point, that made it start down here and stop up there. Let's bring it a little closer. That's bigger than our square, but we can go ahead and baseline this design. I'm not gonna let it quilt beyond, but I wanted to get it pretty close to the measurement of my square. So my next step is going to be to baseline. That's gonna lock these together so it will continually stitch. I always prefer to have the stitching start at the top of the design and stitch down. So under my modify tab, if I touch swap, that's gonna bring this green circle and bring it back to the top. So it'll flip where it's starting and stopping. So now it's gonna start at the top of the design and it's gonna stop down at the bottom. I do need to do another baseline right there to lock that swap into place. Now I can go to my skew function under modify and I can skew this design into that area. Um, I wanna check it one more time so that one to one ratio is gonna zoom in. I think this looks great. It's not too much quilting, but it's also 
enough quilting. So it's a good balance that will fill this square for you. You could, if you wanted to, you could go back and maybe add another repeat if you wanted those butterflies to be even smaller, but I'm happy with them being this two and a half inch size. So I can go ahead and tell my Pro Stitcher to run this design. It's gonna verify all my settings. When I click proceed, it's going to move to the starting point for the design. I do still have my square foot on, and I think that'll be okay because there's no seams in this fabric. I don't necessarily have to have my glide foot on. I brought my bobbin thread up. I hit that resume button. So it's gonna come back and it's gonna start stitching this design for us. showing us on the screen where it's stitched. If I tilt you guys down, you can see where it's stitching on that section of the quilt. So this is just gonna stitch the first five inches for us on the left. All I need to do on the right-hand side is take it over and make that same area, skew this design into that five-inch area on the right-hand side of the design. The downfall to this is now I have to be careful of how I'm putting this purse together when I sew up my side seams because now this is directional. So I've got these butterflies facing the top of the bag. So I have to remember that when I stitch over there on that side, that I also need to flip the design. So then the butterflies are facing the top, facing the outside of the bag. So that way I didn't have one section of butterflies facing right side up and the other section facing upside down. So just a couple of things to be aware of. Sometimes it's easier if you don't wanna to have to worry about something like that to pick a pattern that is not directional and then you don't have to worry about this. So I'm gonna let this finish the rest of this section and then I will bring you guys back when we're doing the one on the right hand side. Let's go ahead and repeat those same steps on the right hand side of our bag. So I'm going to come into my area and I'm going to clear that out. That's going to jump the size, sorry, the design back to its original size. Where'd you go? There it is. That'll jump that back to its original size and its original shape. So now I need to create my area over here. I'm going to come from the corner and I'm going to turn my measure function on and my follow function and I'm going to start by measuring five inches over this way. So I'm gonna find my five inch mark there and that's where I'm going to be under my area tab and hit my multi-point to hit that first multi-point and come back to my zero there and hit my multi-point here. Come all the way down to this corner, multi-point that one and then come back to my five inches. You can see on the screen, oh, let me move you over just a little bit. It is already trying to skew this design into the second five inch area. I just have to get that over, there we go. So I'm at five inches right down here. And then I can hit that last multi-point because my skew function was already turned on. That brought that design into this area for me and skewed it. But remember, I do wanna flip this design. So I can go ahead and baseline this skewed design, go to my modify tab, the rotate function, and I wanna do a mirror image. So then these tops of the butterflies are also facing that outside part of the bag. So when we wrap it around, all those butterflies will be facing towards the top. So I can go ahead, hold on to my thread, tell the pro stitcher to go ahead and run this, run proceed. It'll move to that starting point brings up my bobbin thread for me. I hold tight to all of that. I tell it to go ahead and resume. It's gonna lock my threads together. And start stitching across this one. There are a few things that we do need to do on our domestic sewing machine before we can continue with the rest of this. So let's move over there. I need to do a couple things on my domestic machine before we can keep going with what's loaded on the long arm. So I have that nine inch by 16 inch piece that's the bottom of our bag. And then I have my pocket piece of material. This was 16 inches wide by 44 inches wide. So what I wanna do now is I wanna make a tube out of these. So I'm gonna take my nine inch piece 
and I am going to line that up very carefully. Line that up and I'm going to stitch right across this seam here to attach these together. That is really far away from me. Oops. Okay, get that all lined up. I always prefer to back stitch, so I'm going to do a little back stitch there, make sure I'm all matched up. Then I can open this up, grab my right side of this opposite end, match those right sides together. And stitch this one. Hi, I'm all twisted. There we go. So I've got my tube. This is going to create those outside pockets. And then this teal piece is going to be our bottom part. Okay, all sewn together. The next thing while I'm here that I wanna do is take those four pieces that are four inches wide by, what were these, like 30 some inches long. And I wanna sew these four together. You don't have, have to watch me do that. You all probably already know how to make binding. So I'm just going to sew these four pieces together to make one long strip. And then I'll show you how I do iron this too. So I'll be back in just a minute. Just a few housekeeping tips. I do like to iron my seams. So I did fold this back inside out. So then I could take and I can set these seams a little bit better. So I'm going to push those to the dark. Iron those seams down. And then we do need to find the middle of this piece. So let's flip that back around. So it is right side facing out. And now we need to find the center of this piece. So you could just fold it in half and then watch where these seams are matching up and adjust that way. Or you can lay it out on your table, take your measuring tape and figure out where that center is going to be. So I know that I need this about eight and a half inches. Eight inches from the seam is usually pretty close. So I'm gonna measure from my seam and just try to find that center. That's eight inches. I'm going the wrong way. Let me shift back just a little bit. It's like between eight, eight and a half. You could, of course, do your full measurement and then do the math, but I'm not, I'm not very good at that math stuff. So I'm just gonna keep measuring back and forth until I get where I need to be. And I'm just trying to make sure that my seams stay even. Now I've got about eight and a half on that side and eight and a half on that side. That looks great. So just trying to make sure that this is still all nice and flat. And then I'm gonna take my iron and I'm going to set that seam really well. So this is all nice and flat. 
because remember, this is the bottom. These are our pockets. This is the bottom. Okay. Now I do want to know where that center is. So the easiest way for me without having to do math is if I just fold this in half. That's also a really good double check for me to make sure that my seams are lining up inside of there. That looks great. And then I can take my blue water soluble marking pen and just stick a line right in the inside of that edge. Fold this edge in half, check those seams. That looks great. And then I'm just taking my marker right inside of there and just drawing a line. Let's see if that blue shows up, it does. So I've got a center mark right there. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on the blue on both sides, because that's gonna help me line up on the center of my bag. Then the next thing that I need to iron is everything for our straps. So I sewed this together. I did not miter it. I just did a straight seam. But I did find on the first one that I made that that straight seam did get a little bit bulky. So this one I want to try and press that seam open before I fold anything. So I'm just going to open up this seam here and see if that'll help with the bulk just by having that seam open. So then when you fold this, I know that you probably have an easier way to do this. I um, am going to confess that I really don't unfortunately get to piece a whole lot. So I am sure that you guys have some trick tips and tricks too that work out best for you when you're making straps. For me, my brain likes to just do it one step at a time. So that's how I like to do it. But please feel free to do this any way that you like to. Um, I did see a different bag video that I made a few years ago and this is how she showed to make straps and I really liked how those turned out. They were really strong and durable. So I am just taking and folding in half to make that half seam. I'm gonna try to be pretty careful and keep that really close, just like as if I was making binding, just iron that all the way in half. That's how I like to do it. Then once I've got that half mark in there, then I can take and I can fold this one edge up to that half mark. Let me bring you down just a hair, there we go. So I can take and I can line up this edge, this raw edge to that half mark and then iron this. So then I would iron this piece just like this all the way down. So I do it in half first, and then I iron this in half to that half mark all the way down this whole section. Then for my brain, it's easier for me if I flip everything over, but you could just rotate this down. So the goal is to have where these two pieces are meeting in that middle where I created that middle fold line. So then I would take and fold this one towards me and I would iron this all the way flat, all the way down the entire piece. And then I would do one more fold to fold this in half because that is going to totally hide all of these raw edges in the middle so I don't have to worry about anything fraying. So then I can fold this in half and that's the size of my strap, the finished size of my strap. So that works out to be it's exactly an inch. So it started out as four and because we're doing all of this folding, it's gonna end up as a one inch finished strap. So I'm gonna hold all this down and then I would fold this, really keep those fold lines even together, uh, match that all up together. So I would do the entire piece of this. This is, like I said, bigger than the 108 inches, bigger than the three yards, um, but we'll see what this ends up to be once it's all done. But I do know that it is bigger right now. Then the next step I would do is I would take this strap to my domestic sewing machine and I would stitch a line right here to make sure that these edges stay held together. And then I would also stitch a line on this side just because I think it finishes it and it looks nicer. So that's how you want to make your strap. I will show you what this finished strap looks like when I do have it all ironed. We are ready to attach the pockets and the bottom to our top fabric, the top part of our bag. So we marked where our centers are here on this backing. I also need to mark where this center is on my quilt top. So I'm going to come up and measure here. I've got 36 inches is what we cut that. So I'm going to put a mark right at 18 and then I'm going to mark down here, same thing. Just double check that it's 36 and mark my 18. 
Now I can take this piece with that bottom part facing up and I'm just going to line up those center marks there. Okay. So, you know, it's probably hard to tell but this is where those butterflies were stitched about that five inches in. I've got the butterflies over on this side too. Now I just want to stitch this top and bottom edge. Let me move you guys a little bit so you can see that better. Top and bottom edge of this section to our main base fabric. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get your machine on top of some really thick layers. So don't forget, you can grab your foot, your hopping foot, and you can lift up on that to help get it over that hump if you needed to. So I'm going to start from my left hand edge here, bring up my bobbin thread. I still have my square foot, quarter inch foot on, so I can stitch that a quarter of an inch away from that edge. Oh, I should put my channel lock on. Channel lock on. I'm just trying to use my fingers to help ease that fabric back towards the needle. I do want to double stitch on the top and bottom. I'm going to take that channel lock off, bring up my bobbin thread, and then I'm going to come down and sew this bottom edge too. But I'm going to start over here from the left side. Just double check that that center mark stayed lined up. And I'm going to start on this bottom left corner too. My bag did shrink up just a little bit from quilting. So um, I do have to start just a little bit higher onto this pocket part so this isn't exactly even with my foot. I am looking at where this pink part of my bag is and that's where I'm lining up my foot. That's where I'm gonna turn that horizontal channel lock on and that's where I'm gonna stitch across. bobbin thread. So the next step that I want to do is I want to secure this bottom part of our bag. I want to do a straight line coming down from the middle vertically all the way down. So I'm going to find that middle. I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread up here at the top. Hold tight to all of that. Do a little back tack. Turn my channel lock on. stitch all the way down that vertical. On one of the bags that I saw with the video with Kelly, she had done half inch stitching lines um, apart on the bottom of the bag, um, half an inch apart on there. So what I did is I switched over to my half inch square foot and used that for my guide from this center line going out half inch increments and then a total of three inches wide from the center, three inches wide. Um, what I learned when I put that bottom of the bag together, I wasn't super careful of matching up those sides. So it was kind of obvious that those didn't really mesh together very well. So I'm thinking on this one, I want to do something a little bit different. I still want to have a three inch measurement from each one of these because that's what stops your pocket from all of that stuff falling down and underneath of the bottom of the bag. So I wanna measure three inches out from here, but then in this inside, I wanna do something different on the bottom of that pocket. I think I'm just gonna do a free motion meander. Um, so that way, when I do box out those corners and wrap that bottom around, if my straight lines aren't matched up, it won't be as obvious. So first thing I wanna do is from this seam line, I wanna use that measure function again. So I'm gonna turn my follow button on, I'm gonna turn my measure function on, and I'm gonna measure out those three inches. Uh, almost there, got it. And then that's where I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread, do a little back tack, turn my channel lock on, vertical channel lock. 
So I'll stick straight down three inches. Bring my bobbin thread up. Turn my channel lock off. And then I'm gonna come from this back to the center and I'm going to clear out the measure. So I turn the measure function off, turned it back on, and then I'm gonna measure three inches this direction. Channel lock on. Bring up my bobbin thread. So I'm giving myself that three inch reference on my quilt to where I need to quilt within. Turn my channel lock back off, clear up all of my threads. I like to stitch with the silver foot, especially through all this thickness. Sometimes the plastic feet can kind of bend a little bit. So I'm gonna switch back to my silver foot because that's easier for me to see free motion quilting. So just the standard foot that came with your machine. I'm going to put that on. Then I'm going to start up here at the top. Bring up my bobbin thread and tack. I do want to take my gears off so then I can move the machine a lot easier. So I've got my gears lifted up so I can do some free motion quilting. And I am just going to free motion these two three inch sections, three inches out from the center of the bottom of the bag. I will come back and show you what that looks like in a little bit. Hey everybody, I did end up having to split this video into a couple parts. So this is gonna be part one of putting that bag together. And then if you wanna look on our YouTube, Angie's Answers, you'll be able to find part two for putting this tote bag together. So I apologize for having to cut this video in half, but you can find the second part on there. Thanks so much.